seated. Well, I've just come back from a whole week down at Ebert Ranch Camp in, uh, down by Harper, Texas, Fredericksburg area. So I'm all week down there um, working with a group of six uh, young girls to help them learn how to brush uh, horses and pick hooves and saddle and then ride and trot along with the head wrangler, which is Lori Ann Nadasky, one of our members. Uh, it's been my fourth week down there this summer. So I had a great time. And then there was another group, a confirmation group of eight uh, young people. So it's only 14 in the camp, 12 um, girls and two boys. Yeah. They figured out pretty quick that the odds were in their favor. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm going to preach uh, basically stories about camp and um, kind of uh, tie them into this idea of the treasure that we store up uh, is not the treasures of this earth, but the treasures that come from above and that those are never failing or fading. So that's the idea. Um, I had told uh, Lisa earlier when I got back, I got back late on Friday, you know, I think I just want to just kind of a light sermon. You know, we've gone through so many heavy things. I'm not going to kind of, I just want to have a kind of a light sermon. So if that's okay with you, it's my selfish uh, desire just to ease up a little bit and see what happens. So, all right, let's take a moment then that uh, God might speak to us all in silent prayer and then open us to the spirit. Jesus name. Amen. So yeah, I was with these uh, camp counselors, first of all, which are like eight, nine, 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds, and just full of incredible energy, um, and singing the silly songs, and if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. And then about then 14, 12, and 13 year olds, basically. Well, this one uh, little girl, she's, she was a little girl, 12 years old. She turned 13, actually, yesterday. Um, I sat at the table with her a lot. She had um, a hearing aid and clearly had learned how to speak with very limited hearing. So she often sat at the counselor table because it was less noisy than the kids' tables, I think. Anyway, I got to talking to her. She's from Bernie. Uh, she raises chickens, and she's apparently quite good at it. And she also loves to hunt. She likes to hunt hogs, but what she really likes is hunting turkeys. You'll appreciate this, Jerry. And she's bagged three of them. But she, then she said this. She said, well, sometimes, sometimes I don't shoot them. I just make the girl call and drive the boy turkeys crazy. <laughs> That's somewhat what Jesus does in parables, makes the call and drives his listeners crazy. If you have more crops than barn, you build bigger barns. That's what you do. Otherwise, your crops rot, and they're no good to anybody. So when he tells this story, the people that are listening to him think, well, of course the man should build bigger barns. And guess what? The reason that he's got all those crops is because he's righteous. God has blessed him with those crops. So what do you mean when you tell us that that's the wrong thing to do? It's an answer to someone in the crowd who wants him to tell probably an older brother to share. That's, again, not the way the system worked. So this person, whoever it is in the crowd, is trying to triangulate Jesus, who knows a thing or two about healthy relationships between three persons. It didn't work at 8 o'clock either. That's a Trinitarian joke, people. Come on. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to do it at 11. I've learned my lesson. But Jesus never enters into those sort of baited questions. Rather, he takes you to a different place. I think that's what camp does. At least that's what it does for me. I was a camp counselor at Flathead Lutheran Bible Camp uh, back in the 70s that I still remember as being a formative moment for me where I really came to understand just that God was involved, not just with me, but with the whole world, and that this community that was created during those weeks was something very special. All these strangers come together, even a small group like 14 teenagers and maybe 10 staff members, even this small group comes together in a strange place they don't know each other. Even some of the staff were new that week, so they've got to enter into this kind of system where people have been together for eight weeks, and you can feel there's a little bit of tension about knowing, what's this counselor doing here? And maybe they are doing something that I don't like, and you have to find where those rough edges are and figure out ways to share. And what happens is that through the singing of silly songs, 
and just over-the-top energy and exciting things like riding horses and high ropes and campfire services, somehow these strangers become a community. There was one young girl who finally, after uh, three or four days, came out of the cabin with a guitar. It was a Fender acoustic. She played all the time. I watched her play. I said, where have you been all week? You should have brought this out. I was the only guitar player. And uh, she was wonderful in interacting with this young woman who knew all the songs and sang with such a special voice. Just touched my heart. But earlier in the week, um, I had met with all the counselors. I get together with them and, and act as sort of a chaplain for the counselors. And at uh, 7 o'clock, I make all kinds of cool food for them, nachos and popcorn and IBC soda. And we sit around the lounge area, and they talk about things that are important to them, about all their hopes and their plans, their dreams, where they're going to go after they leave camp. Uh, unfortunately, a, a good number of them are going back to A&M, but I didn't hold that against them. But you know, they have all these plans, but for a summer, they've put it on hold to work 24-7 with junior high kids. Why? Because they love Jesus with a passion, a passion that will not be denied, even when campers are resisting that. During that time together, I said, I've got this melody running through my head. It's an old tune I wrote a long time ago. I'm just not happy anymore with the lyrics, and I really want to change that up and write something new. Uh, maybe you can give me some ideas. This young man, Tristan, said, you know what, our theme this year, this summer, is about seeking treasure. And the text that I like more than anything else is that we don't seek the treasures of this earth, but that we store up for ourselves treasures in heaven. And the other one I like is our Thursday theme, that we pray without ceasing. He was a really remarkable young man of a strong faith, perhaps a little more conservative than I am. And uh, after doing a kind of Bible study with him, he, he looked at me and says, so you mean you're telling me that everything I believe is wrong? I said, oh no, I'm not telling you that. <laughs> and he gave me the gift of those two things. You can't take away that kind of treasure and pray without ceasing. And in 15 minutes, had this song written start to finish. We're going to do it now. So whenever you feel comfortable, you can join in. And the chorus is pretty easy. It goes like this. Don't store up riches that moth and rust can claim, or put your faith in worldly goods. The treasure that is certain and never goes away is the love of Jesus that only God can give. You can't take my treasure cause I keep it in my heart. It is the love of Jesus, from that I'll never part. You can have all the riches that this old world can give, but I will keep my Jesus, and by his truth I'll live. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He came to this earth to set us free. When he died and rose again, he gave us all we need to live the love of Jesus for all the world to see. You can't take my treasure cause I keep it in my heart. It is the love of Jesus, from that I'll never part. You can have all the riches that this old world can give, but I will keep my Jesus and by his truth I'll live. Pray without ceasing, make every moment count. Rejoice in the Lord every day. Give thanks at all times, for the Lord is always near. And when the world tempts you, this is what you say. You can't take my treasure, cause I keep it in my heart. It is the love of Jesus, from that I'll never part. You can have all the riches that this old world can give. But I will keep my Jesus, and by his truth I'll live. Let's do that again. You can't take my treasure, cause I keep it in my heart. It is the love of Jesus, from that I'll never part. You can have all the riches that this old world can give. But I will keep my Jesus, and by his truth I'll live.
So one of the great joys of the week was when I trotted out that song uh, Tuesday afternoon and the kids got a hold of it. It's one they wanted to sing all the time and at the closing service it was the last song that we did and seeing those kids just singing at the top of their lungs and you can't take my treasure. <laughs> of course you people didn't do that because you're uptight Lutherans but that's okay. <laughs> you're at least better than eight o'clock. So. <laughs> Well, here's the last story, and this is the one that touched my heart more than anything, and it's the truth of what happens when a community comes together around the gospel of Jesus Christ and understands that the treasure that never fades, never goes away, is the experience of community that only happens when you share with others everything you've got. This uh, one young man who was uh, scheduled to be the only boy in the camp uh, convinced his friend that he had to come with him. He didn't want to be the only boy in the camp. His friend came with him, but his friend wasn't much for church stuff. He could tell that he didn't, didn't care for the songs all that much, didn't really get involved in things, really didn't want to be at camp. Uh, he liked horses. And he liked the ropes course, uh, but he really liked the horses. So he was riding a big uh, Tennessee walker uh, in the afternoon, and I went on a trail ride in the morning, and I asked him, is it okay I ride your horse? Because um, you know, I thought I'm just trying to get to know him. This was up by Thursday, so we had talked a little bit. I'm going to, it's okay I ride your horse? He said, yeah, that's okay. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put my saddle on your horse, and it's a really nice saddle, and you can ride that saddle in the afternoon. Is that okay? So he said, yeah, that's, that would be good. We start riding, and I'm riding right in front of him on this huge 17-hand paint named Badger, and he's behind me on diesel, and he can't stop talking. We have just somehow now made some kind of connection because I rode his horse in the morning, and he's riding my saddle in the afternoon. And then there was a dance that night. Now suddenly this kid that was so quiet and so reserved is going crazy dancing and filled with this incredible joy that suddenly uh, has burst forth from him. He can't contain it. And then the thing that really touched me was that the next uh, afternoon when we had our closing worship service, we're starting to sing uh, the song, uh, here I am to worship, uh, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. Um, he could not sing that song. Uh, because of the emotion that he was experiencing, that somehow through the sharing of things, through silly songs, through these incredible counselors who will just wear you down in the end, this young man had met Jesus, had met Jesus. That happens in this place all the time. It's what we're all about. It's a treasure that cannot be taken away. No matter what happens to you, no matter where you go, no matter what kind of trials you face, it's a treasure that is unfading. And the only way that we are able to be rich toward God is if we are rich toward one another by sharing the things we have, mostly our hearts and the love of Jesus that never fades, never goes away. So, dear friends in Christ, as you have obeyed in the past, obey in the future, this law of love. Be generous with everything you have, especially yourself. To that God, your glory, honor, and praise, now and always. Amen.